It's the home opener. The Oak Park Knights come in to take on the Lake Orion Dragons. We've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and on the NFHS streaming service. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss, joined again for another year of Dragon Football by Chris Fritching. And Chris, we taught, touched on it at Eisenhower last week. The time between week one and week two, we've always referred to it as the big leap. Coach Bell said they got a lot of things straightened out and it is the big leap. It is, and that's what you need to from week one to week two. Losing 34-17 last week. Lake Orion was up, excuse me, 34-20 last week. Lake Orion was up in going into that, the third quarter there, and then a the couple turnovers turned things around like that. And so, so you're right, they've got to be able to take that next step. Um, they've got to start to build some confidence tonight because after tonight, there's a five-game gauntlet in the OAA Red that they're going to have to go through to play. So the ability to go into that with some momentum tonight um, is, is critical for the Dragons. Oak Park comes in, and they are a very veteran-laden team. They've got 23 seniors, and they're led by quarterback Durante Harris and six-foot, six-inch, mind you, wide receiver Laquan Holloway. They're a team that's got a lot of talent. They got a lot of talent. They got a lot of speed, and they got a veteran head football coach and Greg Carter, who's been around at Oka Park for 12, 13 years, and had success at DePores and elsewhere. And so, so they, they know how to win, right, as a program. And and, and so for the, they were they struggled last year. Uh, they struggled last week. They they lost 20 to nothing to UAD Jesuit. They got shut out. So you know they, they've typically over the past X number of years put out some offensive linemen that have have been uh, gone to Power Five yeah. conferences. Uh, not this year. They're a little inexperienced there, but they're they're fast in the skill position areas and. Lake Orange's going to have to do a good job of containing those skill position players if they want to have success tonight. In the OAA Red, um, West Bloomfield and Adams are the early leaders out of the gate. Clarkston, you might call it a stumble last week, but they're playing, um, yeah, they're playing Southfield A&T tonight, and a lot of places have a and T winning. This division is up for grabs and somebody's got to step to the forefront. We've said it as many years as we've been doing this, Doug. I mean, the OAA Red is one of the best conferences in the, in the entire state of Michigan. And and while you had West Bloomfield and Adams winning their games last week and Clarkston did lose, keep in mind, they played a very good Davidson team. Yeah. And Clarkston has a first-year head coach. Yep. All right, and Justin Pinter, so who took over for Kurt Richardson. So, so bottom line, there's a lot of factors there. But when it's an all said and done, you know, next week is when the OA Red starts because they're going to be playing one another at all different levels. And, and uh, so uh, while this is going to be obviously an important game tonight for the Dragons and the Knights, uh, next week is when you're going to see the, the OAA Red kind of find its way as to who ended up take, taking the top. Yeah, you touched on a little earlier that the next five weeks – are going to be really crucial, probably not only for Lake Orion, but for every team in the division. Absolutely. I mean, you got Oxford, you got Adams, you got Stony Creek, West Bloomville, and then Clarkston on homecoming here. So, I mean, think about that as a gauntlet. And so, it's, it's again, I can't say it enough. It's critical tonight that the Dragons don't turn the ball over. They, they lost the turnover margin on a minus three last, last week. They gave the ball away three times to the Eagles of Eisenhower, and they can't do that tonight if they want to come out on top. Always special when you have your home opener. Always special on a, this time Thursday night, to be playing Dragon football. Stay with us. Pre-game is underwritten by Malasha's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Malasha's Palace has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1960s. Give them a call at 248 393-2222 for more information. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. 
The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Just getting ready for kickoff as the Lake Orion Dragons take the field. The Dragons taking on the Oak Park Knights. The Knights are led by head coach Greg Carter. He's in his 12th year at Oak Park, his 42nd year of coaching overall. His overall record is 360 and 119. He is 60 and 36 at Oak Park. Very unusual tonight that we have two coaches that are members of the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Coach Carter was inducted in 2020, and as we know, Coach Chris Bell was inducted this past summer. Lake Orion, Coach Bell comes back, and he is looking for his 150th win at Lake Orion. Chris, you've got your keys to the game. Win. Win. There you go. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second here. Okay. We will pause for a moment as Director of Bands Michael Steele will take the podium sometime and lead the band in our national anthem. As he leads the Dragon Marching Band in the Star Spangled Banner. going into keys to the game. <laughs> we were, in, in order to win, number one, they've got to stop turning the ball over. They turn, As I alluded to in the pregame, they turned the ball over three times, and two of those possessions resulted in direct touchdowns for the Eagles. 94-yard, uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, fumble return uh, at 2.51 of the third quarter, and then 20 seconds later, an interception return for a touchdown by the Eagles as well. So obviously turning the ball over um, uh, will not bode well for the, for the Dragons. Uh, secondly, uh, I, I think they got they got to stop giving up the big plays. Last week they gave gave up nine plays of over 20 yards or more offensively. Just can't do that defensively. And, and but bottom line, you know, keys to the game: come out here and have some fun. Come out here and have some fun. Your home opener, um, season opener here at, at, at uh, Dragon Stadium. Um, you know, as we always say. We, we love the atmosphere, we love yep. the ambiance, and, and hopefully the kids can experience that tonight uh, with a victory over the Knights. A couple administrative things to take care of. We'd like to wish Joey Tysick and his new bride, Marie, congratulate them on their recent wedding. And also, we'd like to wish a very happy 15th anniversary to my broadcast partner, Chris Frishing, and his lovely wife, Vicki. Thank you, thank you. I'm uh, 
she allowed me to be here tonight, Doug, and uh, I'm grateful for her for that, but uh, so many more things in my life. So uh, the best decision I ever made to, to ask her to marry me, and uh, 15 years later, we're, we're still enjoying each other. So I had to yeah. promise her I, at the, that we give you back after right. we're done. <laughs> Up here in the booth with us, with us tonight working the graphics board is Raymond Valentine. And keeping stats for us tonight, our new stats person, Allison Miller. Welcome up here. Dragons will receive Dorian Hill and is the deep back. Kicking off for Oak Park is number 12, Bishop James. Ball comes up around the 30. And the Dragons will take over first and ten. Dorian Hill on the return. T.R. Hill is going to start at quarterback tonight. Talking with Coach Bell before the game, he said that he kind of had a, a deer in the headlights moment last night. But he's gotten over that, and Coach Bell is really high on what T.R. can do for this offense. Dom Novak comes out and splits wide to the left. Caleb Jones in a slot left. Billy Roberson's a running back. Comes back on the sweep to Darian Jones. He got about seven. Call it six, it'll be second and four. Jones, 10 carries last week, 39 yards for the Dragons versus the Eagles. Trips to the right, single wide left. Raymond Payne, now he goes in motion. Handoff up the middle. Billy Roberson on the carry. He's up near a first down and Referee Fred Casavatera signals first down. Our officials tonight, the referee is the aforementioned Fred Casavatera. Mike Dunn, the Oxford Flash, is the head linesman. Bob Kelly is the line judge. Chris Cantanero is the umpire. First and 10, motion far side. Roberson up the middle gets jammed up about the 32 and falls forward to the 33, gain of a couple. The back judge, back judge tonight is Dave Thatcher. Tom Senkowski is the side judge. And Mike Corcoran is the field judge. Same alignment for the Dragons, tripped right, single wide left. And off, got a seam. Raymond Payne, he's still going. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. 66 yards. Beautiful run by Payne. I'll tell you what, it was set up by number 66, Carlo Fortino, who did a nice job of getting that outside arm and that defender turned so Payne could get on the perimeter and go down the far sideline for, what'd you say, 66 yards? 66 yards. Great job up front, great job on the perimeter. Again, you, I, I saw Fortino the whole time that, that time, but it's the perimeter blocking as well that uh, helps bring that down the far sideline. Well done. Will Hoffman. We'll try the extra point. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 10.20 to go here in the first. Dragons go out to an early 7-0 lead. This quarter of action is underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. And the scoreboard for the first half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full-service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000 
or visit their website for more information. Tell you what, instilling confidence, uh, a drive that goes 79 yards in one minute and 40 seconds, that will do it. Less That'll than one, 140. So nice start by the Dragons. And Raymond Payne's right back out on the kickoff coverage. I don't know if he's had a chance to catch his breath yet. <laughs> Tell you what, that's one thing we're going to have to watch for tonight. Cause it's, it's sticky, it's, it's sticky. humid, and uh, that sun is out and beaming down on everybody. High end over end kick, taken on the five. Number 11, Artel Guyton on the return out to the 25 yard line. Yeah, I was talking with Billy Roberson before the game because we saw him not play a lot in the second half. And he said, yeah, I, I cramped up. And we were talking like we said last week for a Thursday game, you better start hydrating a lot mm -hmm. on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. The ball, nose of the ball is at the 25 yard line on the right hash. Deronda Harris is the quarterback. In a slot right is Laquan Holloway, and he's a big one. And we have a flag. We're going to have a delay of game. No, it's an illegal substitution against Oak Park. So that'll back them up five, make it first and 15. I'm going to make an observation. I'm walking in here from the traffic coming up on yeah. 75, which is absolutely horrible to deal with. But when I, I'm walking up at 611 into, into the stadium, and the, and the bus just got here Yeah. And, and from Oak Park. And I, I just wonder if, if that uh, inability to prepare maybe uh, an hour or so prior to game, I don't know if that's going to have anything to do with anything, but I just I, I want to bring it up because it very well might. We'll see how the, the, the game goes. Handoff to number six, Darnell Boone, and he stopped for no gain. It'll be second down, and or loss of two. It'll be second and 17. You know how coaches are. They're creatures of habit. And if you don't have yeah. your, your proper uh, pregame um, preparation, if you will, your timing all down, sometimes that can throw off the way you start a football game. Trips right. Looking, throwing deep down the right side. Got a receiver open, slips a tackle. Stumbles forward and down at the 25-yard line is number seven, Tim Squire, senior wide receiver, and there was nobody around him. No, Harris had plenty of time. He stepped up in the pocket, threw a nice ball. You're right, Squire's wide open. Can't be that wide open. That's one of the big things that Orion struggled with last week, giving up the big play. And uh, early on, um, the Knights took advantage of the miss, miss assignment at the back, the back end of the secondary. First and 10 from the Dragons, 25, 9, 10 to go here in the first. Harris from the gun. Handoff up the middle. Number six, Darnell Boone is in for the touchdown. He had a big seam in the middle and went in almost untouched. Two back-to-back -back plays of, of, again, over 20 yards. And uh, it, what do they, shoot out the OK Corral? I mean, we're, we're, not, we're barely yeah. three minutes into this game at 7-6. Yep. So coming out to attempt the extra point is number 12, Bishop James. Number nine, Stephen Gullett is the holder. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 8.56 to go here in the first. We're tied at seven. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School Sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. 
be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. And we have a student crew tonight, and they're doing an excellent job. So throw that concept I had about uh, arriving late on the bus, yeah. uh, throw that out the window because uh, obviously the nights after that illegal substitution on the very before the very first play, uh, they quick struck and uh, it's now tied at seven. End over end kick taken by Dorian Hill at the 10, up over the 20, up over the close to the 30, slips the tackle, keeps his feet moving over the 35 to the 37 yard line. Good balance and good fight by Dorian Hill on the return. Yeah, he's protecting the ball well. He's spinning off would-be tacklers, and, and what's all said and done, sets up the Dragons' uh, really nice field position for their second drive. T.R. Hill leads him out. Caleb Jones splits wide right. Darren Jones in a slot right. Raymond Payne in a slot left, now moves right. Handoff, Roberson up the middle. Gets about five, it'll be second down. Greg Montgomery, number 25, the linebacker, senior, made the play there. We're going to hear his name quite a bit tonight. Montgomery and Burrell on the stop. Yeah, Montgomery and Burrell on the stop. Miles My Burrell has gotten a lot of talk also. Raymond Payne on a sweep. Gets the first down and a little more. Kept the legs churning and got enough for the first down. Yeah, Miles Burrell is getting a lot of college talk along with six foot six inch Luan Holiday. Donye Penn on the stop for the Knights. First and 10, double wing, double slot. A motion this side, Roberson. Number 56, Norm Adams had him by the shirt tail and just wouldn't let go. Got a gain of two. You talked about having some seniors on that squad, but there's, there's they've got some freshmen, they got some sophomores yeah. up as well that are, are on the team and contributing. Yeah, that's one thing that, that Coach Carter talked about is he, he thought the fifth quarter rule that is now in place in high school football really allowed his kids last year to get some ex quality experience where the kids can play at the JV yep. level for four quarters and then come on up and play a quarter yes. in a varsity game the next night. Raymond Payne up through the middle, slipped, went down after about a yard and a half gain. It'll be third and five. Nose of the ball just shy of the Oak Park 46 yard line. So that rule is, is set up so that you know, it's, it's, it's a development opportunity for kids. But, yeah. you know, it, so coaches are tr still trying to find the best balance of how to utilize that the best, for thing, for their, best way for their program. First down for the Dragons. Billy Roberson had that forward lean that we talked about last week, and he got the forward lean, got him past the sticks. It's a first down for the Dragons having that nose, knowing where you need to get to, having a nose for those sticks. Uh, you know, it's like a, a dog hunting, a sniffing. Where, where's that line? Where's, we don't see that yellow line, unfortunately, oh, because no. oh, by, by being here, because uh, we're live, but uh, it's all said and done, he knew where it was, first down Dragons. Tight formation for the Dragons on first down. Toss back to Roberson. Cuts it outside. Yep. And we got a penalty, probably going to get Raymond Payne for holding. I thought I saw Samuel Blake, the number 71, spin uh, okay. a defender as well. So one of the two. I just saw Raymond Payne sh shake his head. So we'll get the call here. Fortunately, in high school, they don't... Uh, they don't uh, announce typically the... Uh, they're, they're mic'd up here. They should be. They were mic'd up last year. Let's 
So we'll see what the call is. We got two penalties. We got one in the secondary back here on the sideline and one here yeah. at the 36 yard line or so. Holding against the Dragons and a personal foul face mask against the Knights. So it never happened. We'll do it all over again. First and 10. Offsetting penalties. But in order to get that edge like the Dragons have to this point in time, again, working on getting that outside shoulder of the defender, making sure our wide receivers are, they're on an island with those cornerbacks yep. oftentimes. Either they're going to run run off the defender or they're going to have to stock block. And, and many times because they're isolated out there on their own, that's one of the first things those side judges see. Another tight formation for the offense. Hill under center. Rolls out to his right. He's going to run it. And he got about five. Yep, they're going to mark him that out of bounds at the 35-yard line. It'll be second down and five. Number 73, Brandon Nepchuk did just enough on Daryl Washington, number eight, the defensive end, to allow T.R. Hill to get out and around the outside. It wasn't much. He, he, all he did was shield them, but when it, it was enough to get five for Hill. Single wide out wide left is Dom Novak. Motion this side, handoff. Roverson gets forward near the first down. He's going to be two yards short. Roverson dragged down by 25. Greg Montgomery. So it'll bring up a third down and two. Now, I don't have a lot of heights and weights on my Oak Park roster, and I was told that they were fairly inexperienced up front. They look big. Yeah. They look big to me from they up do. here. So third and two. Motion this side. Roberson, first down Dragons. Brought down at the 28-yard line on a quick hitter. And it's the same thing. He does, he's, he's lean, getting that forward lean more now than what we saw him in the past. You know, one of the things that we uh, experienced last week, or the, the Dragons offense experience last week, was the fact that there was a lot of miscommunication, that backfield flow, they were bumping yeah. into each other. And three or four times it happened in the game resulted in a couple fumbles. And uh, we haven't seen that this so far tonight, which is a good thing. And you, you're seeing the backs really focused on that ball security. Darren Jones on the inside handoff, or handoff on the sweep, gets down to the 25. It's going to be second and seven. You know that was a major point of emphasis this week. I'm sure it was. The footwork, the, I mean, the footwork is so critical, making sure it's a, a six inch step as opposed to a, a, a 10 inch step, whatever it might be, and making sure ball placement quarterback is where it needs to be. The little things, the fundamentals that allow you to have success. Double wide, double wing. Pain in motion, he gets a handoff. Cuts it up inside and is ridden down at about the 23 yard line. Dario McGee was one of the tacklers for Oak Park. Didn't gain much, but had good, good enough vision to be able to allow. Fortino was driving his defender wide towards the far sideline, and he couldn't get around the edge, so it allowed the back to cut up inside and uh, got a couple yards. But uh, again, that's where a back's got to have great vision. You saw that there. So third down and five, they're calling it. Handoff. Up the middle is Dar Darren Jones. He's going to be about a yard and a half, two yards short, and it's fourth down. Lake Orion last week, 241 yards rushing. And so um, obviously we haven't seen them put the ball in the air yet. They, they're, yeah. they're very good at what they did do. Well, they've got some backs they can get the ball to, and, and we've seen that so far to this point. Tight formation on fourth down. Who's going to get it? That's the answer. That's the question, I should say. Raymond Payne trying to break it outside. He's not going to get there. He's going to be marked out of bounds 
Yeah, King came from his defensive back spot to, to make that play and uh, turnover on downs. Yeah, they're going to mark him down at the 21. So the ball's turned over on downs. Oak Park will take over first and 10 with 2.59 to go here in the first, tied at 7. So now's the time that you got stopped, now you need a stop. You do, you do, and you, again, going back to what we talked about, not giving up big plays, making sure we're, we're not misaligned, misassigned, and we don't miss assignments. And, because uh, you know darn well that Oak Park watched film last week, and you know that the Eagles, they saw that the Eagles had success in the air. That's what the Eagles, have, or the, excuse me, the Knights have done so far. Handoff inside, gets a couple. Maybe a yard and a half. The one big pass play for 60 yards. The one big run play for a touchdown for 25 yards. Julia Stewart on the carry that time. They're giving him two. It'll be second and eight. Trips to the right, single wide left. Harris operates almost exclusively out of the gun. Dropped the ball and he's going down. He was looking at his slot receiver going across and the ball was snapped and he never really got it. Yeah, he was. He was, he was snapped and it was snapped low too. And a combination of those two things resulted in, in that miscue. So uh, big opportunity for the Dragons. Got to big, get a big stop now here on third and 13. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. We're tied at seven. It's third down and 13. Trips to the right, single wide left, single back in the backfield. Harris from the gun. Back, looks, going deep. Got a receiver open, caught and brought down, that was Artel Guyton, a wide receiver, junior wide receiver, and he got a couple steps, and Harris put it right right where it had to be. He did, and Guyton did a nice job of getting right on top of Pockmeyer. He just ran a, a go route, a vertical route down the far sideline, and ultimately he got on top of Pockmeyer, and so when the ball was thrown up and over uh, his head, Pockmeyer would have had to go through Guyton to make the, the play, didn't, couldn't, and a big first down for the Knights. So first and, first and 10 from the Lake Orion, 44. as we're passing the one minute mark here in the first. Two backs in the backfield, handoff, up the middle, brought down number 20, Iron Buckner, and Alec Fisher and Pat Rowland in on the tackle. Gain of about one, it'll be second and nine as we're inside 30 seconds. Beautiful night here tonight, a little warm, high clouds. Doug, you know better, it's, it's football night. Every it's night football. there's a football game, it's a beautiful night. It doesn't matter the weather, it's football. Twins <laughs> to the right, single wide left, two backs in the backfield. Harris back, got pressure, breaks a tackle, and he's up near the 30 yard line, but there's a flag Back at midfield, I think we're going to have a hold. Holding Oak Park. So that one's coming back. And that's a spot foul. Yeah, and you can see that. I know the, the play was brought back, but you can see a kid like Harris. You, that's a kid you've got to contain. Yeah. You can't let him get on the perimeter. You can't let him step up in the pocket and find a seam. He found the seam there. And uh, he's a big kid to bring down. So the line of scrimmage was the 44. The penalty was called at midfield. And the ball is now marked back at the 40-yard line. 
And that's the end of the first quarter. We played one. We're tied at seven. Orion Neighborhood Television and the Lake Orion High School Dragon Broadcast Program have partnered to produce live streams of dozens and dozens of Dragon sporting events throughout the year, including tonight's game. You can watch games live on demand, plus they are on our channel. Look for us on Comcast Channel 22 if you live in the Lake Orion area and Channel 99 on AT&T UVerse. You can also find ONTV on Roku. Live stream subscribers have access to countless other games from around the OAA, the state, and the country. Half of the revenue from online streaming subscriptions goes back to the Lake Orion High School broadcast program. Learn more about our upcoming live schedule at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Pretty entertaining first quarter. A lot yeah. of a lot of offense by both teams. Yep. No, no question about it. And that's you know. We, we talked last week about, you know, first game jitters and, and, and for both teams, really. And, and I think, you know, sometimes you, you don't get settled defensively. And I think we saw that there in the, each of the first two drives for each team defensively. They gave up some big plays and, and uh, six point or seven points on the board for each team. And defense has kind of settled down now. Pass over the middle, complete. By number three, Julia Stewart. Up, oh, Davon Armour, number five. I'm sorry. Just Austin a, Kahn chased him down on the tackle, but that's enough for a first down. Just a pitch and catch, a, a little quick slant, a three-step drop and throw, and uh, out of the shotgun formation, and a nice, uh, nice ball on time, in stride. And uh, when you, you throw a ball that's in time and on stride, you don't have to make the receiver adjust to it. Um, big plays can happen. You saw that there. It's another completion in the middle of the field. It's another completion over 20 yards. Yeah. That's four so far this game. Yeah. And we're only 11.30 into the second quarter. Four wides. Hand off up the middle. Darnell Boone slips one tackle, but can't get away from... They, I got to talk to Coach Jennings because they brought some more people up. They got a guy out there playing the nose. It's number 62, and I don't have a 62 on my roster. Second down and, eight. and he's probably another one of the fifth quarter guys. So four wides, single back in the backfield, motion far side. Now back. Handoff. Darnell Boone goes nowhere. Pat Rowland in on the stop, among others. So it's now third down and nine. Balls on the 21 yard line. Play clock's closing in on 10 seconds. Double wide, double slot, single back. Back, pressure, down. Down and a turnover, I believe. Yes, it is, Dragon's ball. He had a big swarm of green shirts come right up the middle and I, when he turned around and looked, I thought maybe the ball would come out, but I didn't want to call it. And thank you for calling. He called number 62 again. Made yeah. The recovery, turnover. Big play for the Dragons. Yep. And we said, you got to do a stop with a stop. Dragons come out, trips right. On first down, motion this side. Handoff, Dorian Hill trying to find running room. Slips one tackle, 
gets maybe a yard. Daryl Washington, the defensive end number eight, is the one who forced that play to not get vertical down the field, but to go sideways towards the Lake Orion bench. Fortino couldn't get the edge, couldn't get the corner, couldn't get that outside shoulder turn, and as a result, um, couldn't turn up field for, you know, they got one yard, but uh, couldn't get more. Second and nine. 9.20 to go here in the second quarter, tied at seven. Wins left, single wide right, two backs in the backfield. Darren Jones on the carry, and T.R. Hill did a great Darren play Jones fake that time. He made the, he handed the ball off and carried out his assignment, went right up the middle. It gave that defense a little something to think about, and got Jones a couple extra yards. Yeah, if you can take one defender with you, that can open things up elsewhere. Third and three. Jones again on the carry. He's got a first down and a lot more out near midfield. They're going to mark the ball right at the 50. It's first down and 10 for the Dragons. That quick hitter to the outside. And Jones showed a lot of speed on that. Shows a lot of speed, showed a lot of, again, a knack for knowing where it didn't need to get to to get a first down. First and 10, trips right. It's a desire, it's a want, you know, that you have to have if you want to play that position. Dorian Hill set up on a wing, now comes in motion. Roberson stumbles forward for maybe a yard. Robertson. It'll be second down. And you can kind of tell that the night defense is keying on number three. Well, I would too after you know watching him run for 180 yeah. yards and a big 81-yard touchdown last week. And, and so, yeah, you, you look at the stats, you look at the film, and you say, okay, we got to put somebody on number three. We've got to focus on number three. And I'm sure Coach Carter and the Knights did that all week long. Single wide left, tight formation at the line. Toss back, Roberson. He's got a hole. Got a first down, can't shake loose. And brought down at the 25 yard line. Darrell Washington had a hold of his shoe and just wasn't gonna let go. But you saw right there why you gotta focus on a yeah. kid. You know, a kid like Roberson, because he's got a, you get him out in open space like he did there and it's tough to bring down. He didn't want to go down. No. So Good backs, great backs, don't want to go down. Double wide, double wing. Motion this side. Roberson again, and we're going to have a stoppage of play. Whistle before the snap. Thrown by... We're going to have an illegal substitution by the Dragons. That'll back them up five. Start penalty against nope. it's Roger Smith team. called it as a false start, so we'll go with what he says because he doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a timeout taken by Lake Orion. 6.50 to go in the second quarter. Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road, have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Athletics since 2009. Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. Give them a call at 248-814-7559. And if it's not too late, order dinner tonight. Doug, our, our, our statistician, Allison Miller, did her research, and she pulled up the fact that number 62 is Judah Kinney. So there's your answer. He was number 92 last yes, week. Yes, he was. Okay. Nice job. Thus the individual who recovered the football. They just didn't. And you wonder why we hadn't called his name to this point yeah. in time because we didn't know that the number was changed. They just didn't sew his nameplate on <laughs> that. I was going to say, if 
if he was a fifth quarter guy, a sophomore, right. he's playing a lot tonight. <laughs> now I see why. <laughs> so first and 15 from the 41. Handoff and tripped up by Greg Montgomery was Darren Jones. And we have a flag down. We'll check the... It's out here on the perimeter about the 31-yard line, yeah. away from the play. So we'll see what referee personal foul hands to the face defense. It's one of those situations where you, you know, the, the play's being run away from you. And, and, and I'm sure he was, the, the defender was being stock blocked. Yep. But when it's all said and done, you know, you, you just got to maybe, I don't know, I, I didn't see the it's, play. I, but, but bottom line is these plays being run away from you, you can't get the hands up near the face right. of the, the wide receiver. That's obviously what they called there. So it is not going to be a first down. It will be second and two from the 26-yard line. Twins left, single wide right is Caleb Jones. And we have another stoppage of play. As the line judge comes in. They're saying that uh, it should be an automatic first down. That's why they stopped the clock on illegal hands of the face, or hands of the face. So we'll have a conference as the umpire comes in to join it. It is going to be an automatic first down. Nice call, Coach Bell. Nope, it's not. It is. It's a first down and two. The sticks are official. It's first down and two. Handoff, Dorian Hill coming around the right side. He's in the open. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. Many, many times, Doug, I'm up here. There is a penalty marker on the field. They, did they get Fortino? Again? I was just going to call out Fortino. I was just going to, and I don't know if that, the, the hold was on him or not. But from up here, I was just going to give him praise because I thought yeah. he did a great job of securing that edge. One more time. It's Fortino and Washington going at it. He's doing a great job of holding the edge, but I think this time they got him for a hold. Yep, holding. So this will come back. Again, I don't know who it was from up here, so I don't want to single him mm -hmm. out. But uh, I was watching that play, and it's been fun to watch it in that uh, right tackle do a nice job. Yeah. Because it's a battle all night long. If, if Lake Orange's going to run this offense well, they've got to do a good yep. job of securing that edge. That's a couple times now that they've have not been able to do the, do so and, and been called for penalties. And Dorian had a pretty good seam to go through. The, the blockers did a great job of sealing it off, but just a little enthusiastic. So it's going to be first down and five. It's First and four from the 28. TR up the middle. He's in. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. No flags. Great play fake, and the flow went one way, and he just took off the other. My eye flow went that way as well, and I didn't know TR kept the ball. Well done. Well executed. Big time play for the Dragons. He is doing a great job disguising his play fakes and the handoffs tonight. And we can tell he's, he's much more confident than the quarterback we saw last week. So Hoffman on for the extra point. Connor McCartan is the holder. Ball's down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 6.26 to go in the second quarter. The Dragons 
take a 14 to nothing, 14 to seven lead. DVD copies can be purchased by calling ONTV at 248-393-1060. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast vault. That's DVD copies, 248-393-1060. Seventy-one yard drive. Nine plays. Capped by a twenty-eight yard touchdown by TR Hill. And the Dragons have not put the ball in the air tonight. That is unusual for a Chris Bell offense. They've had success on the ground. They so have. so you know, yeah, yeah. What 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 you didn't you hadn't seen until that last play is a run by TR Hill. That's right. It was it's been Roberson. It's been Jones, it, you know, and so forth. And so um, you, you, you get them focused on Roberson and Jones. And, oh, by the way, play fake, TR keeps it, and boom, you know, 28 yards later, a touchdown. So now the Knights have got to consider and, and be aware of all those weapons. Yep. High short kick taken at the 5, up over to 15, 20, got a head of steam, over to 30 to the 31 goes Guyton on the kickoff return. 41, Chris Hargett on the return, on the tackle for the Lake Orion uh, kickoff team. We talked about this in the pregame, but this, this, this game number two for both teams is critical. Um, you know, Oak Park coming in 0-1, Lake Orion coming in 0-1, um, you know, Oak Park's got Groves, Birmingham Groves, then Harper Woods, then Bloomfield Hills in their o, in the OAA White. Lake Orion's got Oxford, Adams, yeah. and Stony Creek in the OAA Red. So I mean, it just it's critical to get off uh, with get out of this game with a victory to to set up the rest of their season. Four wides, handoff up the middle. Darnell Boone gets no gain. If in fact he may have lost. It'll be second and 11. Guess who was there? No, number 62. Judah Kinney. Yeah. Now we know who he is. Who we knew was 92 <laughs> last week. So second down and 11. We're just under six minutes to go in the second quarter. Doesn't matter what number he is. He's, 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 he's good. good. He's good. And he's going to play at the next yeah. level and, and contribute to, yep. to, to whatever program he decides. He's going to contribute uh, immensely, both on and off the field. Trips to the left, single wide right, single back in the backfield. Harris and when uh, Lawan Holiday takes off, he's six foot six. When he takes off and the rest of the team doesn't, it's kind of noticeable. So that will back him up five on the false start. Immediately comes out of the play, or out yeah. to the sideline. It's now second and 16. Same alignment. Holloway takes a rest. Harris back, got time, now pressure, down he goes. Jake McCoy on the tackle, on the sack. We talked at the, again at the pre-game pre, pre about the offensive line not being as, as experienced, and we're seeing that right now with yes. the Dragons' pass rush. You know, Harris, they're doing a good job in the back end, but when you can't, as Harris, when you can't see downfield because that pocket is collapsing, yeah. it's tough to complete footballs. Yeah, he had no time at all. McCoy was in on him before his lineman could even set up the block for him. So that's why pass rush is so critical to the success of a, of a defense. You know, you might be inexperienced or young in the secondary, but if you've got a pass rush to get in the passing lanes and, and collapse a pocket, the good things are going to happen. They had one sack last week against Eisenhower, and now Oak Park is going to take a timeout. So go mobile with Orion Neighborhood Television anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with Orion Neighborhood Television to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs 
in high definition on demand. Orion Neighborhood Television working to bring Lake Orion to the world. And speaking of the world, for those of you picking up this game on the NFHS streaming service, wherever you are in this planet we call Earth, <laughs> we hope you're having a great evening or day wherever you're at. Why we, after this play, we'll get to our second quarter sponsor. So third down and 24 for the Knights. Four wide, single back in the backfield. Harris looking. He's going down again. Oh, my goodness. Pat yeah. Rowland. Alec Fisher made a date to meet at the quarterback, and now it's fourth down. You were watching the pressure up front. I was watching the back end, and the, and the, the secondary did a nice job of staying not only on top of the, of the uh, night uh, wide receivers, but also staying wide. So uh, in both ways, um, that Lake Orient defense seems to be finding some rhythm here in yeah. the second quarter. Trying to get the number of the punter. He's kind of got his back turned to us. Dorian Hill back on for the return for the Dragons. Short punt. Takes an Oak Park bounce to the Dragon 45 where they take over first and 10. Our second quarter sponsor is underwritten by Smentka Craft Shows. Run by Joan Smetanka. Smetanka craft shows how several craft shows during the year all throughout Michigan. In fact, they'll be set up at the Romeo Peach Festival this weekend if you want to check them out. For more information, visit the web website smetankacraftshows.com. That's S-M-E-T-A-N-K-A craftshows.com. They also have a presence on Facebook. First and 10 for the Dragons. Handoff, Billy Roberson gets a hole, tries to break oh. it outside. Oh my goodness. He got face mask and Lawan Holloway almost turned his head around. And Billy had a seam, a big seam, and was just turning on the speed. And that, that's a dangerous thing when you got a fast guy gets grabbed by a face mask. And, and Billy got up, and he was, he was, looked like he was mad at himself. And, and my goodness, uh, he, he, again, we talked about it earlier, he doesn't want to go down as yeah. every good back does, but I don't know how you couldn't go down oh. with, with that face mask there by Holloway. Nonetheless, this is an opportunity, a great opportunity. You start the drive in, in Knights territory, uh, opportunity to put some points on the board before the half. Ball's on the 18-yard line, first and 10. Handoff around this side gets jammed up after maybe a yard gain is Dorian Hill, number 44, Damian Baisley the second, and number 54, Daryl McGee on the stop. So it's second down and 10. They're calling it no gain. T.R. Hill shakes a tackle. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Number two on the night for the sophomore quarterback. And you're right, Chris, it happened again that the flow followed Darren Jones. Because he did a nice job with the ball fake. He, he rode that back to the, to the left, to his left, and he pulled it out and kept it and was able to find the end zone from 18 yards out. Will Hoffman for the extra point. Ball's down, kick is up. 
and the kick is good. 2.29 to go in the first half. Dragons increase their lead to 21 to 7. It's plays like that for a sophomore quarterback that just immensely instill confidence. Yeah. To, 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 to say, I can do this, I can play at this level. You know, Hill's the one who threw the interception yep. return for a touchdown last week against the Eagles. Yep. You know, and that can get a kid down in the first game of the season of your sophomore year. But when you have come back, you're the, named the starter in week two yep. at home. You're representing your, your, your high school here at home, your first varsity football game, and you come out and a 28-yard 20, touchdown and now 18-yard touchdown. Yep. Um, boy, that does, does wonders for a kid's confidence. He has done extremely well tonight. All as you said, without throwing one pass. Without, without throwing a pass. Just, so, just shows there's different ways to skin a cat. Yeah. Artel Guyton is deep, and Julius, or I'm sorry, Loreno O'Neal is the other deep back. Hoffman's got it teed up at the 40. Referee blows the whistle. Line drive kick taken by O'Neill. We got a flag. He's got a seam. The kicker's left to get him. He's up over the Lake Orion 45 down to the 43, but there's a flag down at the Oak Park 36. This is usually a block in the back or a hold. A hold. Holding on the return. So that'll be a spot foul from the 36. And Oak Park should start out first and 10 from their own 26. If my math is correct. Nowadays it's just we have all these devices and things that tell us what these these uh, <laughs> we need one up here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I've got our statistician here, you know, to help us yeah. out with that stuff. And she fills in with all kinds of useful information, like Judah Kinney changed numbers. Drive charts, all that that's good stuff. It. That's so important for the for the viewers to, to hear about. And we can just watch the game and call it the way we see it. Yeah. And hopefully we see it from way up here. I think we're, you know what? I, I still like our sight lines better. You know, Swine Out Field was a good field, but our sight lines are so much better here. Harris getting pressure. Throws, got a receiver open. That's O'Neal. And he's taken out about the 44-yard line. It'll be a first down for Oak Park. Harris did a nice job of avoiding the pressure and was able to get out to his left and find the back in the flat to find O'Neal in the flat and uh, nice first down. And those are the things that, that, that got us try to stave off that, that pass rush that, that uh, the Dragons are providing. If they can do things like that and get Harris out of the pocket to, to create plays, um, you will saw the success they had there. James Patterson Jr. on the stop for the Dragons. So it'll be first and 10. They've got trips to the right and single wide left. Harris back, looking, got time. Now he's going to run it, breaks a tackle. He's over midfield and goes out of bounds about the 45. They're going to call it the 44-yard line. He had a lot of time, and that was more of a coverage. I, I was just yeah. about to say that because he did step up in the pocket and saw, you know what, there's nobody open. Yeah. But I, 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 So I'm going to tuck it and run. He did that, got the first down, but the point is, is that that Dragon secondary is doing a nice yes. job of staying on top of those wide receivers. So the Knights come out with trips right, single wide left. Ball's marked on the 44-yard line of the Dragons. Harris getting pressure, goes down. Back on the 46-yard line 
of Oak Park. And that Dragon front four, again, just overwhelmed the night offensive line. Harris tried to slither out and, and turn his back and, and roll to his left, and, and he slipped uh, you know, near midfield there. But, but it's because the outside guys, the outside defenders are coming and attacking mm -hmm. from the outside in as opposed to inside out. When a pass rush attacks from the inside out, that's when Harris can be dangerous. Dodges the rush and throws incomplete intended for Timothy Squire, number seven. Minute 15 to go here in the second. Dragons up 21 to seven. If you're, you're a defensive lineman for the Dragons, you're a pass rusher, you thrive off these yes. opportunities. You, you can tell that that offensive line of the Knights is, is, is struggling. You can tell they're kind of discouraged and beat up a little bit. And, and if you're a defensive dra Dragon defensive lineman, you're having a field day. You're having a fun time trying to get to Harris. So it is third down and 20. Timothy Squire splits out wide left. Alerno O'Neill is split in the slot right. Harris got pressure again. He's going down again. They only rushed four that time, and three got to Harris. Dan Babcock on the sack. And Lake Orion's going to take another timeout. They've got one left. Oak Park has two. I think they're going to reset the clock. Because they called 102, I think they're going to put on the clock. Yeah, good, good. You know, call the timeout, call the timeout, and, and hopefully uh, maybe get a bot snap or a high snap or a short uh, short punt, whatever it might be, and, and uh, see what you can do before half. 112 is put on the clock. So it is fourth down and 20. The ball is about the 40. 40 and a half yard line. Dorian Hill drops back deep for the Dragons. Troy Pakmara and Austin Kahn are split to handle the Gunners. High yeah. snap. High snap, and he's going down. That's oh. exactly why you call that timeout. Yep. It could be a bot snap, a high snap. We, we just talked about it. We just saw it. Now Lake Orion takes over first and 10 from the Knights' 30-yard line. Raymond Payne recovered the high snap. Now you got 107 with one timeout left and plenty of time. Ball's going to be marked at the Oak Park 30 with 107 to go. One timeout for the Dragons, two for the Knights. Twins to the right, single wide left. Two backs in the backfield. Robeson and Jones. Got him, got him, got him. Pass, touchdown Dorian Hill, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. So you lull them to sleep with the run and then you throw the pass. And what a beautiful ball T.R. Hill threw. Hill to Hill. Hill to Hill. For the touchdown. Yeah, no. Dorian just took off from his slot position and just outran the backer that was on him. And T.R. put a nice ball on it. Six points. He was probably celebrating. Uh, Dorian is probably celebrating with the band down there. So Will Hoffman... In for the extra point, Dragons a player short on the t on the extra point team as Wyatt Vasseur comes out. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 
101 to go in the second quarter. Dragons increase their lead to 28 to seven. This is getting to be a good one. Well, that, that was a long drive there. One play, <laughs> seven, six seconds, yeah. six seconds, 31, 30 yards. Hey, be sure to tune into replays of your favorite games right here on Orient Neighborhood Television, especially this game. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www. Orion, O-N-T-V, dot org. You can look at games and always look at, you really have to look back at, at uh, games after the fact, and you see turning, turning points. I'm not saying this is a turning point, but if you look at the last five plays of Lake Orion, a 28-yard uh, touchdown by Hill, the next drive. I'll finish after this kickoff. Taken by Artel Guyton, brought down by Mike Jockwig and Carson Negre. The third drive of Lake Orion, a 28-yard touchdown by, by T.R. Hill. Their next drive, a 27-yard play, zero, play, zero yards, and then 18 for a touchdown by Hill. And the very next play, a 30-yard touchdown. So in the last five plays, plus 28, plus 27, zero, plus 18, plus 30, three of those plays have resulted in touchdowns. That's going to make Coach Bell a happy man tonight. Turning points. You yes. know, plays, we talked about it last week. There's usually five or six plays in a game that determine the game. Will those plays that we, I just mentioned be the ones that determine the game? We're going to find out. There's a second half yet to play. And as we said, let's not overlook the great job that defensive front has played tonight. We got a whistle. Delay of game against Oak Park. That's coming off after a kickoff return. So back them up five. It'll be first and 15 from the 24 with 54.2 seconds to go. Harris back, going deep. Got a receiver, caught. Caught by number 11, Artel Guyton, and Harris put it right on the money he for He put him. it right on because Austin Kahn is not in bad position whatsoever. Yeah. Just the ball and the catch was simply a better play. I have no problem with Kahn there uh, being in position where he yeah. was. So first and 10. Double wide, double slot. Harris. Going deep, going for the end zone, and overthrew everybody. Yeah, look. Troy Pakmara on the coverage. Yeah, Harris was trying to get to O'Neal. O'Neal was running a post route, but the ball was, O'Neal was looking inside over his right shoulder. The ball was thrown over outside mm -hmm. his left shoulder. That's a tough ball to adjust to, and it really, when it's all said and done, uh, Pakmara was the one that was closest yes. to, to the ball, yeah. So it's second and 10 with 34.2. Three seconds to go. And obviously, what you can see, you're, you know, the Knights are down 21. Obviously, late in the second quarter here, but they're they're trying to take advantage of that speed um, that they they saw early. They showed early on, excuse me, in the first quarter. Double wide, double slot. Harris got pressure. Down he goes. Oh my goodness, he's back at midfield. Chris Hargett. And Miguel Vasquez on the sack. That takes him back to the 48-yard line. And Oak Park is going to take a timeout. When you're running 
vertical routes down the field. You need more time to be able yes. to set up and throw. When you're not throwing the short game, when you're throwing the intermediate and the long game, you need the time to be able to throw. Harris simply is, does not have the time to throw that long ball. They got to start looking at in the second half, starting to complete balls in the short game to get their, their skill position players out on islands against the D Dragon defenders so they can inch back into this game. There's plenty of football left to yes, play, no but question. they just got to be able to utilize their speed and get the ball to their playmakers to, to get points on the board. As you alluded to earlier, we don't have heights and weights for these Oak Park players, but that is not a atypical big offensive line that they have. They're, they're little short squat guys. They're, they're shorter, and again, like I said at the outset, uh, pregame, they've got a lot of kids over the years in that offensive line that have gone to Power 5 conferences and played. They just don't have that this year. They're a the little inexperienced there, and again, we're seeing the Dragons take advantage of that inexperience. Number 77, Kamari Barginer is in at right tackle. He's a big one, and I think we're going to have a false start so we'll back them up five more. That will back them up to the 48 yard line. And it's third down and 23 yards to go. Trips to the right, single wide left. And pressure and down he goes. And that time I watched the center. In the center, as soon as he made the shotgun snap, he turned to block to his left. And it made this huge gap that green shirts just filled. you've at least got to make an effort to tackle someone. The clock goes to zeros. That's the end of the first half. The Lake Orient Dragons lead the Oak Park Knights 28 to seven. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orient Dragon football here on Orient Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Halftime is sponsored by Molossus Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, located at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Molossus Palace has been servicing Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1960s. Give them a call at 248-393-2222 for more information. We'll be right back. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. At halftime, the Lake Orion Dragons leading the Oak Park Knights 28 to seven. And Chris, talk about an offense waking up. I think we've seen that here tonight so far. We did, uh, led by T.R. Hill. I mean, 267 yards total offense to, to Oak Park's 96. Think about this, the touchdown, four, five possessions for Lake Orion, resulting into four touchdowns, a 66 yard run by Raymond Payne. This third drive of, of, of the uh, game, a 28-yard touchdown by T.R. Hill. Fourth drive of the game, an 18-yard touchdown by T.R. Hill. And the fifth drive of the game for Lake Orion, another touchdown, a 30-yard pitch and catch yep. from Hill to Hill. So uh, very uh, efficient, let's say, uh, for the five drives, resulting in touchdowns. And um, 
finally, after that first drive, defensively, Lake Orion kind of settled yeah. down a little bit and, yeah. and started to realize that, you know what, this pass rush has got to be a critical part of our success tonight, and yeah. we've seen that so far. Absolutely. And the other thing, we are watching the maturation and the development of a sophomore quarterback. He is a different player than what he was last week against Utica Eisenhower. And, 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 you know, all it takes is, I shouldn't say all it takes, because it takes multiple plays on a consistent basis to do it over and over and over again. But, but, but for a, again, like I said earlier in the second quarter, for a sophomore quarterback to come in for his first start at home and yeah. have a half like that, um, that's a pretty good start, I'll say. Yeah. And they only put the ball up once. And they got maximum efficiency out of it with a touchdown. You know, and we talked earlier in that first quarter, too, about the big plays Lake Gorin was yeah. giving up defensively. Three big plays over 20 yards in the first quarter, only one big play over 20 yep. yards in the second quarter. So Oak Park will receive. Will Hoffman will kick it off. High end over end kick taken at the five. Out to the cuts back up field and goes down near the 25 yard line where the Knights will take over. Number 11, Artel Guyton on the kick return. So Oak Park will take over first and 10 from their own 26 yard line. Let's see what kind of adjustments Coach Carter and the Knights staff make offensively because, again, like I, I said earlier, I, th I think they've got to start going to that shorter passing game to get that yeah. ball out quicker and let their playmakers make plays. They really have not thrown any short passes. Everything has been deep downfield. Twins left, single wide right. Handoff up the middle. Broke through was number three, Julia Stewart. And he was yeah. just tripped up as he crossed the 30. Yeah, Roland got a, a finger or a hand, whatever, on that yeah. shoe to trip him up because otherwise he might still be running. Gain of five, second and five, just underway here in the third quarter. Dragons up by 21. The Knights don't seem to be in any hurry to get the play underway. Handoff up the middle goes nowhere, stopped up by that Lake Orion front seven. Stewart brought down by Jake McCoy. It'll be third down and about four. Running into that, you know, middle of that dragon defense led by Judah Kinney, you know. Yeah. Um, Got to utilize your speed. Get on the perimeter. Get deep if you can. And, and uh, again, like I said earlier, the dragons have done a nice job of, of, of containing the middle and things deep uh, with the exception of that first quarter. Harris looks, throws, caught. He's going to have enough for the first down. Pat Rowland was there to bring him down and Let's, Pat Rowland is doing such a good job. He's the, he's the general of that defense, and he's doing such a good job. You, he's always looking over, seeing where the defensive players are at, making adjustments if necessary. You need a communicator out there, right? You need yeah. that one to take charge and, and lead the defense, get them aligned properly, bark out the signals, and you're right, he's doing just that. So first and 10, they come out with twins left, single wide right, two backs in the backfield. And we have a flag. And it's going to be a false start against the Knights to back them up by. I tell you what, the Knights are fortunate that that play was drawn, called at that point in time because Judah Kinney was in the backfield <laughs> and right in Darnell Boone's face. And so uh, it's probably just as well for the Knights, that is. So we'll back them up five. 
It'll be first and 15. The ball's marked on the 32. Dragons coming. And Harris just throws it away. I tell you what, the, the Lake Orion coaching staff is, is, is being very boisterous down there because it looked, sure looked like their right tackle jumped off sides that time. Didn't call anything. James Patterson chased him out. So I sure thought it was, he jumped off sides to me, but uh, what do I know? We're only up here. But you're right, it is a very active sideline for the Dragons. And you know what? It's a young coaching staff there. We go back to our days when, you know, it was a much more aged. <laughs> well, back in those staff. days, we were younger too. <laughs> Trips to the left, single wide right. Harris. Look at that. Judah Look at Kinney's that. Kinney's got a hold of that him. Play. Kinney's being blocked and somehow is able to get his right hand off that block or that hold, if you will, and, hold and still, on. still make a play on Harris. That is, boy, that is, that is strong if you ask me. Holy mackerel. So third down and 12. You got to gain a three, and two of that was with uh, Judah Kinney hanging all over him. But, but for, for Judah to have the vision to still be blocked and, and somehow find a way to get that, uh, that open hand, that right I hand off. I think he had it in the V of the shirt and just held on. Make a play. That is strength. Third down. So third down, double wide, double slot. Oh, threw it out to the left flat to Timothy Squire, and he dropped it. Again, that's a play. You try yeah. to set up that screen. You, you get the ball to your playmaker yep. on the perimeter, and he was just looking upfield too soon before it was caught. Incomplete fourth down. So fourth down, Dorian Hill drops back for the Dragons. He sets up office about the 34-yard line. I think Darnell Boone is the punter. Peace. And it's partially blocked. Pick it up and go. That's a live ball. Absolutely it is. Favorable the, bounce for the Dragons. The Dragons are going to get it on the 15-yard line. Yeah, I think there was a minute of indecision there where everybody's standing around, what do I do? That's a live ball. Scoop and score. When that ball's crossed the line of scrimmage and a ball's bouncing yeah. like that, th those are the times you 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 want to stay away from it, right. you know. Um, but in that case, it was deflected, partially blocked, and you're, like you said, it's a live ball. And it, again, favorable bounce for the Dragons. Can't start much better than first and no. first and ten from the plus 15. T.R. Hill comes out in a double wide double slot. Roberson's alone back. Dorian Hill in motion. Billy Roberson up the middle for about five. It'll be second down. Did you see the movement of the Lake Orion offensive line on that play? Yeah. I mean, if, if you were to just look at the mass of green, all you saw was green in, uh, uh, th that, that play started the 15 yard line. Yeah. He was touched at the 11 yard line. So th there was no white jersey until the 11 yard line. That's good get off, that's good movement by that offensive line. Second and five. Dorian Hill on the carry. He gets maybe a yard and he's backed up. So it will be third down. They're gonna mark him back on the 10 for no gain. So it'll be third down for the Dragons. Dom Novak split wide left. He 
Hill on the keeper, there rolling out, looks, oh. throws. Oh, intended for Dorian Hill and right through his hands. The ball was a little behind Hill, but, but I think it, the reason being is because T.R. Hill was trying to throw around Luan Holloway, who was attacking. We talked how, uh, earlier about yeah. how, how big and tall Luan Holloway is. Um, he'll try to find around, a way around that, uh, that uh, <laughs> Holloway, who's right in the passing lane. I think that's what forced the ball behind Dorian Hill for the incompletion. So Hoffman in for the field goal attempt, and it is good from, from 30 yards out. 7.01 left to play in the third. Dragons increase their lead to 31 to nothing. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch LOHS Sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity, football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at dragonbroadcasting.org. ONTV thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bringing Dragon Sports to the world. Can you imagine, Doug, if way back when we were in col or college, high school, that we would be able to have anybody watch our games when we played anywhere around? I mean, what a cool concept. I was talking about that with a friend and... You know, in our days, a dad shot it in 16-millimeter film. <laughs> right. A drugstore stayed open late on Friday nights. The dad took the film in, and they processed the film so we could have it on Saturday morning for film review. Or the days in the day where you had to meet up with the opposing coach to get VHS tape from them on the playoff game you were going to be playing. I, I mean, did that many times. Yes, you did. Yeah. I just the technology and what uh, what it allows coaches and kids to, to do. It just it's it's tremendous what uh, how kids can and coaches can learn at the at the drop of a hat. I mean this this yeah. tent down here. On the sideline for Lake Orion is set up so that the yeah. the kids can watch game film virtually real time. Yep. You know, and so and you learn that way. You can make adjustments that way, and it just uh, this game has advanced so much over the years. It's fun to see. Oh boy. So double wide, double slot on first down. Toss to number three, Julius Stewart. And he goes down after maybe a yard. It'll be second down. They're calling him no gain. It'll be second and 10. Well, the heat of kickoff has gone away. It's, <laughs> it, it's really nice up here now. It's also nice when you're looking at that scoreboard. It says 31-7 sure Dragons, right? Sure is. Same alignment, double wide, double slot on second down. Harris looks, throws, incomplete. And that time, Trey Pacmaro was with him step by step and helped break it up. Yeah, it looked like Pacmaro got, it looked like Holloway had good position, but Pacmaro got his hands in between Holloway's hands yeah. to disrupt the ball from getting into Holloway's hands for the incompletion. So nice coverage by Pacmaro that time. And that's six foot six against mm -hmm. not six foot six. <laughs> right. So third down, Holloway splits out wide to the left. Fumble. There was a flag. And I think they're calling it an incomplete pass. A legal shift. Yeah. And there was two people moving. We had the yeah. motion man. And I, it came from the far side of the field. Illegal shift. Good call. So that They'll probably will probably take the decline the penalty, I would guess. Yep. Yeah. 
Force it, make it fourth down. Fourth down. Oak Park thinks they're going to go for it. Yeah. At least what have they got to up, lose? Set up to go for it. Yeah. And now we're going to have a timeout charge to Oak Park. 6-11 to play. And the Dragons lead 31 to 7. And replays for this game are sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of ONTV since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. Trying to get you some scores around the OAA Red. Clarkston 42, Southfield A&T 30 in the second quarter. Boy, high scoring game there. Uh, Halftime, Rochester Adams 27, Rochester 0. A couple o other OAA scores in the, in the white slash blue. Farmington 28, Royal Oak 0. Dorian Hill back deep. He's going to let it bounce. Takes a good Oak Park roll inside Dragon territory down to the 36-yard line for the Dragons to take over first and 10. So the Dragon offense has been on a roll. Let's see if they can keep it up. They were given a short field, and they had to settle for a field goal. When you convert five of your six drives into points, yeah. usually that's a good sign. And so far tonight it has been. Twins to the right, single wide left. Roberson on the handoff. He's tripped up behind the line for maybe a yard and a half loss. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Smith did a nice Smith. job from that from that defensive back position. I think he came off the block of Dorian Hill from uh, in that slot position and, and made the play. Nice play, that is. T.R. Hill's gone all the way and done a very good job tonight. Raymond Payne comes out wide to the left. And off this side. Got an opening. Number 22, Darren Jones. Got a first down inside the 40-yard line, right at the 40-yard line of Oak Park. Jones got that corner, and once he, it wasn't much of a seam, but once he got that corner and got to the edge, he utilized that speed. The sophomore did a nice job taking into Knights' territory. First down, Dragons. So first and 10, now the Dragons come out with trips right. And now motion that side by Dorian Hill. Handoff up the middle. Roberson gets nine. And Chris, you look at this Dragon roster. You've got a sophomore quarterback. You've got a junior running back. This is a young team. And these kids are playing. They're not watching and learning. They're out there playing. Yeah, I mean, Payne's a, Payne's a so, um, excuse me, a junior. Jones is a sophomore. Roberson's a junior. TR keeps it. Gone around the left side, out of bounds, about the 23, they're going to call him. That's enough for a first down. And that's something else we're seeing is he's running. You know, you can tuck it and run, but you can tuck it and run with authority. And he's running with authority tonight. He did, and, and Raymond Payne had a nice block downfield on number 10, Deion Cleary. So first and 10... Roberson up the middle. See what I mean by movement? Yeah. Look at the movement. 
there's not one white jersey on this side right. of the line of scrimmage. They're four and five plus yards downfield. He got five. It'll be second down. We have an official's timeout. We have an Oak Park player down. And those are things, when, when you watch tape tomorrow, and, and you know how co critical coaches can be, right? You, you know, right now, so far, so good. 31-7, yeah. four minutes to go in the, in the third quarter. But uh, you can nitpick a lot of things. But when, you, when you're watching it from this perspective and you're watching the movement that the yeah. offensive line, I mean, you can nitpick anything, right? But when it's all said and done, you're getting movement, you're, getting, uh, you're creating holes, you're creating seams, you're, you're making plays, and you got to feel good about uh, what the Dragons have done to this point in time. Coach Bell always used to say when it was before the season started, we're going to go into film review Saturday, and you're going to say, Coach, didn't we win this game? <laughs> but you know what? That's it. Picked it. It's it's like we were talking about earlier. You never have a perfect game. This isn't baseball where you can do, do 27 up, 27 down. Mm -hmm. You never have a perfect game as hard as you try. Daryl Washington, the senior that's, defensive uh, end. Actually, no, that's... Uh, that's number nine. Stephen Gullick. Stephen Gullick. Gullick, senior defensive back. I think he cramped up. But going back to what you're saying, Doug, I mean, you, you never have a perfect game. I, I, I think... That's what makes football, I think, what makes sports so great is that there's always something to work yes. on. Um, you might come out on top in a game. You might come on top in a play, but that's why you, you, you have to play the next game. You have to play the next play. You have to play the next quarter, yep. whatever it is. And, and so um, there's always something to get better at. And, and, and the good ones, the good players, the good coaches understand that to, uh, to try to keep, you know, perfect their craft, so to speak. So it's second down and five after the injury timeout. Dragons line up in a tight formation, one wide out, split left. Toss back to Roberson, trying to get it outside and kept his feet. He got near the first down, but he's going to be about a yard, yard and a half short. Yeah, they tried to run that toss sweep to the bunch set over there, and, and really Oak Park did a nice job of staying firm and not letting much movement on, on, on the edge there. Once again, number eight, Daryl Washington, doing a nice job of holding his ground. It's, they're calling it third down and two from the 16. Another tight formation. First down, Dragons. Oh, my goodness. That was another one where they were pushed back easily five yards. Again, we've talked about it. That inexperience up front on both sides of the football for, eight, for Oak Park. Uh, and we've seen it offensively. Or we're, we're seeing it defensively because, again, the Dragons are doing a really nice job of, of getting movement. And, and that's what Coach Bell said sure. from the beginning of the year. They're big and physical up front, and we're certainly seeing that tonight. Yes. Sweep this side by Darren Jones, and he's marked down at the one. He went down, tried to extend the ball into the end zone. It'll be second down. And that's one of those ones where you're running back and you're carrying the ball and you're running hard and you, you think you're in and you, you just you, can't you just, Those are so frustrating. Yeah. Now, second he's probably down, begging for that ball on this play call right now. Dragons go full house. Hand off, Roverson, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. And they had Pat Rowland in playing a tight end position. And again, they just pushed him back three yards into the end zone. It's 
So a three yard touchdown run by Billy Robeson. And the Dragons are looking to tack on the extra point. Hoffman. High snap, balls down, kick is up, kick is good. 2-11 here in the third. It's now 38-7, Dragons. Doug, a nine play, 64 yard drive, three minutes and 47 seconds. And, and in that first half, we talked about the big plays. We talked about, um, you know, the big play, thank you, Allison. The, the big plays, <laughs> I knew they were here somewhere. You know, plus 66, plus 28, plus 18, and plus 30 for touchdowns. In this drive, there was only one play that was over 10 yards, 23 yards, but a nine yep. play drive, very deliberate this time. So yep. you've seen both in, in both halves. You see, saw the big plays in the first half, and you saw a, a, a longer drive and a time consuming drive so far the second half. That's what I'm say. It is eating up clock. Yeah. Which right now, that's what you want. You want to get that clock to all zeros. And, and so from an offensive play calling standpoint with Coach Bell and, and the team, you, you've, we've been able to see Lake Orion do it in a multitude of ways uh, offensively. They can hit you with a big play, and they can do a drive, to, uh, a drive, a time-consuming drive like we saw there. So, uh, again, all things that uh, the Dragons can build on uh, in this game and moving forward. High kick down to the three. Taken by Artel Guyton. Guyton with the kick return. Tripped up by number 40, Carson Negri. Carson Negri on the tackle for the Lake Orion kickoff team. So Oak Park will take over first and 10 with 2.01 to go in the third quarter. Look out here and, and uh, you know, Lake Orion's gonna work on getting some guys in that uh, to gain that experience, I think, right now. Seeing yeah. a couple of defensive starters on the sideline yeah. right now, and, and uh, that's a good that's a good thing. That's how you develop kids, it's how you develop them and, and grow programs, build programs. Handoff up the middle goes for a couple. And not only that, but those young guys that were on the sidelines, those twos, if you will. They watched what the ones did. They watched how they were pushing the the offensive line back. And they're saying, hey, we can do that too. So let, hey, I'm interested to see how the twos do in this situation. But you keep Pat Rowland in there. You keep the cornerbacks in there. The, the defensive backfield doesn't look like it's changed. And they played very well tonight. Handoff up the middle. Got about five. Stewart stopped by Hargett. That was Julia Stewart on the run. Dropped by Chris Hargett. It'll be third and two, and we are inside a minute here in the third. It's third down and two. And Oak Park does not seem to have a sense of urgency about them. No, they don't, and, and uh, you, you kind of wonder why. Handoff up the middle. Caught and dragged down. He got the first down. Pat Rowland on the tackle. Judah Kinney coming back in after sitting out a few few plays there. Chris Hargett also in on that tackle. So first and ten. Double wide, double slot. We have we have not seen Harris under center all night. Got time and under through Davon Armour. He stepped up into the pocket. He had time to set his feet and throw, throw and just threw it low. 
You know, that's one of those things, though. He, he did step up and he did throw a low, but it's, it's like it's a result of what's happened to this point in yeah. time to him that makes you feel sometimes a little skittish. It's like a, the happy feet type thing and so forth, and uh, he rushed the throw and threw it incomplete. 2.2 seconds left. Harris back, looks, going deep. Intercepted by the Dragons. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Trey Pakmara, and he stayed step for step with the wide receiver. He did, and that ball was thrown inside of Pakmara, and, and you know, if that ball is going to be complete, it's got to be thrown up and over and above the, the wide receivers. He threw it inside. Pakmara did a nice job of, of boxing out, if you will, the the wide receiver for the interception. Great way to go into the fourth quarter. That'll end the third quarter. The Dragons are up 38 to seven. Orion Neighborhood Television and the Lake Orion Dragon Broadcast Program have partnered pr to produce live streams of dozens and dozens of Dragon sporting events throughout the year, including tonight's game. You can watch games live or on demand, plus they are on our channel. Look for us on Comcast Channel 22 if you live in the Lake Orion area, and Channel 99 on AT&T UVerse. You can also find ONTV on Roku. Live stream subscribers have access to countless other games from around the OEA, the state, and the country. Half the revenue from online streaming subscription goes back to the LOHS broadcast program, and I'll finish after this play. Dorian Hill coming around the right side is stopped after maybe a yard. So learn more about our upcoming live schedule at www dragonbroadcasting.org Through three quarters, Doug, Lake Orion, 336 total yards offensively to Oak Park's 116. Second down and Amazing. Bottom line, I mean, it's, they're, they're taking that, those, that yardage and turning it into yeah. points, and, and that's the, obviously the difference in the game. Second and nine. Trip set up left. Robe, no, that's not Robeson. That is Jones on the carry. Jones, tackled by King. And Connor McCartan comes in at quarterback. So we have to assume that J.R. Hill's day is done. And a very productive day it was. Third down and six. So third and six, Jones is the running back. Dragons have trips right, single wide left. Jones on the carry, gets maybe a yard. It'll be fourth Jones. down. Stop by number 52, James Blaylock. James Blaylock on the tackle. It's fourth down. And the Dragons look like they may have considered going for it on fourth down, but they're going to punt. Have not punted tonight, Doug. They have not. No. Caleb Jones drops back. This is your area of emphasis. Yeah. You know, we haven't Special seen this teams. Yeah. And Artel Guyton is back deep to receive. And we will probably have a delay a game against the Dragons. They were indecisive at the onset whether they wanted to go for it or punt. And they just ran out of time. So that'll back them up five. It's going to be fourth and ten. Balls marked on the 20. Maybe they were looking at the analytics of, of whether they should go for it or not on fourth down. <laughs> I always think back to Jim Leland, and he just, yeah, thought, 
what are analytics? I, <laughs> I, I coach by, by my right, gut. Right. <laughs> High snap. Oh, my goodness. And it's going to get. Oh, no, 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 no. Lake, no, he signaled touchdown, but Lake Orion fell on. That's a safety. It should I, not be considered a touchdown. Let's see. Let's sort it out. The head official. Did he have possession of it as he fell on it? I thought it was fallen on by a Oak Park player. Now, I saw that, but I didn't think he ended up having possession. They signal touchdown. Nothing's been put on the scoreboard yet. No one seems to be complaining on the Lake Orion sideline. No. no. So it's interesting. We've seen two high snaps, one for each team in this game, which ultimately has resulted in points yes. for the other team. The importance of special teams. Yeah, Coach Bell came down a little bit and then just turned around and walked back the other way. So number 12, Bishop James, on for the extra point. They're a player short. And for that matter, so are the Dragons. Those transition plays right there, right? You sometimes yeah, absolutely. You, sometimes it and the snap's bad. That's one way to convert. Yep, it was good. Bishop James very alertly picked it up and just took off to his right and found the found the pylon. Yeah, he just I mean just flat out used his speed to get to the edge yeah. and, and you know usually on a situation like that when there's a bot snap someone yells bingo bingo or, or yeah. go to to allow somebody re to release into the corner or into the flat and uh, I didn't see anybody there he just used his speed to get to the edge but you know the, the Knights took advantage of uh, Lake Orion miscue and, and uh, you know we, certainly last week we talked about the three turnovers by Lake Orion resulting into 14 yep. points for the Eagles um, this one turnover tonight for the Dragons leads to eight points for the Knights so they're gonna have to watch for that onside kick to this point in time yes. because yes there's 938 left yes their Knights are down by 23 but you saw how fast uh, the, the game can change and um, so they got to be ready. Dragons got to be ready for that onside kick. Yeah, there's a hands team up front. Connor McCartan, you've got your quarterback, Billy Robeson, Pac Mara. Okay, Joey Tysick said that there was possession by Oak Park, being very alert down in the truck. So James has it teed up. Approaches and kicks it away. Taken on the 10. Up over the 30 to the 31 yard line. Goes Darren Jones. So the Dragons will take over first and 10 on the 32 yard line. So Coach Bill obviously is gonna to wanna to see Connor McCartan um, take, take charge and, and lead the, the team down to, to kill some clock, move some clock, get, to get those chains yep. moved and, and start to get his quarterback, his other quarterback to start building some confidence for himself because you know it just like anybody else, this game is fast, it's physical. Mm -hmm. You never know when you're gonna to need to step up and, and, and contribute to your football team. T.R. Hill's back in. You're right. And he takes off up the middle for about five. I think they're calling it four, so it'll be second and six. Knows that the football is on the 37 yard line. My apologies, Doug. I looked yeah. out. I looked out and saw Connor on the field, and then next thing I know, I turned away, looked elsewhere, and, and TR's out there. Yeah. So, my apologies for that. And if you look at it, I mean, under nine minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. They're eating clock right now. They are, but, but 
but but they're going to. The, the Knights are down three scores technically. And Coach Bell calls timeout. So 8:42 to go in the game. Dragons are up 38 to 15. Orion Neighborhood Television and the Lake Orion High School Dragon Broadcast Program have partnered to produce live streams of dozens and dozens of Dragon sporting events. I just read this one. I'm going to read it again. <laughs> you can watch games live on demand, or plus they are on our channel. Look for us on Comcast Channel 22 if you live in the Lake Orion area and Channel 99 on at and UVerse. You can also find ONTV on Roku. Live stream subscribers have access to countless other games from around the OAA, the state, and the country. Half of the revenue from online streaming subscriptions goes back to the Lake Orion High School broadcast program. Learn more about our upcoming live schedule at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Double wide, double slot. Robeson's the back. Jones in motion. Robeson up the middle, stacked up after a gain of one. Robeson stopped by Basley. Fans, your attention, please. We have the winner in tonight's 50 50. So it'll be second down. They're calling it no gain. Third down. They hadn't changed the sticks when I looked at it. So, so third and five. TR rolling right, looks, throws, got Robeson. Makes a man miss. Gets up to midfield and into Oak Park territory. Good work after the catch by Billy Robeson. Good work after the catch. Good work by T.R. Hill to avoid the pressure and find a throwing lane to get it to Roberson. Well done. You're seeing a kid grow up tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, and there's others that are growing up tonight as well. Don't get me wrong, but, but you're seeing a quarterback, again, we've said it a number of times, instilling and develop some confidence uh, in, in what, he, what he can bring to the table. And that's really exciting for the Dragons offense. Raymond Payne shifts to a slot left on first down. Now comes back this way. Robeson, maybe two. It'll bring up second down and eight. And the clock is ticking away. And I know we talked about it. Not all, all schools, not all high schools have the 40-second play clock in the right. corners of the end zones. But this really can be um, to your benefit when you're up by 23 points yes. to be able to sit back and, and be very deliberate in the play calling, be very deliberate in your lineups, your, 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 your uh, formations, I should say. And you can really run that clock down to under five before you, you, you make the call oftentimes. Handoff coming around this side. Raymond Payne. He's close to a first down, and he's got it. At the 35-yard line. He had a convoy in front of him. He is very good about guiding his blockers to pick his spot. You got him. Yeah. One good thing about backs is, you know, great backs, they've got to be patient at times, right? Yes. It's not always go, 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 go. It's, it's, yeah, it's called a running back because you got to run, but there's times where you've got to be patient. And you saw that that, that time with Payne. Uh, it did a nice job in getting a key first down for the Dragons. Yeah. We'll give some credit to this offensive line. Uh, Carlo Portino, Sam Blakely, they're the tackles. They've just been opening up canyons for these running backs tonight. 
Plus, the, the push they're getting at the point of attack. So, you, 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 again, 6.37 to go up Lake Orange, up 23, and, and uh, you want to get out of here. You want to get out of here with some more experience. You want to get out here, out of here healthy. Yes. And then you go on the road next week to uh, the school up the road. Yeah. Uh, there have been long time, obviously, rivals yeah. like Corey and Oxford. The war of M24 goes next week at Oxford. So it's just, um, that's always, no matter what year you are, no matter what sport, that's always a big game. It, it's uh, No matter what the records are, that's always a big game, and, and that's really going to be uh, Un something special to be a part of. Unfortunately, we will not be there broadcasting know, yeah, next I know. week. But just, just being a fan, just being a fan of football, Hand being off. a fan of Lake Orion and Oxford, the rivalry. Davis up the middle has a first, or Jones up the middle has a first down. And the clock continues to run. They said something about number 32. Yeah, Dom can Jemmy. He's it's now in single back, yep. Yeah, he's he's the back behind TR Hill. McCartan's in now, so they made the switch McCartan, at quarterback yeah. again. Yep. And he goes nowhere. And Jemmy on the ball, on the carry, and he was jammed up at the line. So it'll be second down and eight from the 20. Second down and eight. Matt Costanzo checks in at one of the wideout spots. He's split wide right. TR looking it over, eating the clock up. Except it was a, yeah, that was <laughs> Connor McCartan. He was looking the clock down. And he just threw it away. He threw it away because Greg Montgomery's right in yeah. his face. And, and if he didn't throw it away, Montgomery's going to get him. So, so you don't want to do that but because you stop the clock in that right. regard. But uh, you also want to protect your body as well, there's, right? There's a, there's a thing about self-preservation that comes <laughs> into play. Right. So third and eight, two wideouts, two wings. Pain in motion. He gets the carry, cuts it up inside, trying to get more, and he's not going to get it. He's going to be about a yard short at the 11. Oh, now they're calling him down at the 14. So it's going to be fourth and three. And we're under five minutes. And here, it doesn't matter if you go for it and don't make it because then you're putting them starting deep in their own territory. But at the same time, if you do go for it and make it, you're, you're telling your offense that, yeah. that you have a belief in them that they're going to get the job done. Yes. And that, that can go a long way. Again, I've talked a lot about building confidence uh, tonight, and uh, that's what they're trying to do right here, and it looks like they got that There's first a first down. down. There's a touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. Wow. Dorian Hill on the carry from 14 yards out. And that was one of, boy, talk about turning on the Jets, planning and getting upfield and turning on the Jets. Well, we talk all the time when we're coaching football about, you know, defenders running downhill, which means yeah. you want to attack that ball carrier as fast as you can as if you're running downhill. Well, guess what? Dorian Hill ran downhill there, yes. but he ran downhill into the end zone for a touchdown. Hoffman on for the extra point. McCartan's holding. Ball's down. Kick is up. 
and the kick is good. 4.15 to go. We now have a score of 45 to 15. Dragons in front. 10 yard drive, 10 yard drive, five minutes and 23 seconds. 68 yards. 68 yards. Again, a much more deliberate drive. Both both drives yes. this half. Uh, the touchdown in the third quarter and the touchdown here in the fourth quarter. Much more, much more delivered. Not running clock and 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 running, working some things offensively that uh, they ultimately need to work on because not every drive, not every every play is going to be run for big plays like it was in the first half. Right. And uh, you know, again. I said it earlier in the first half, there's different ways to skin a cat. And, and Lake Corian offensively has been able to do that for the most part on the ground. But yes. it, 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 there's been times where they've thrown in a pass or two that's been successful. So now you've given opponents moving forward multiple things to look at defensively. You've got three young backs that are doing a nice job. You've got a quarterback, sophomore quarterback, who's doing a real nice yes. job as well. And uh, now you've got to, to focus on multiple players if you're, you're scouting the Dragons. And oh, by the way, you got to deal with that offensive line that can yes. come off the ball and hit you. And the and defensive line is playing well yes. tonight. Taken on the seven. Cuts it back. Trying to get outside. Still alive up around the 20. And... Chris, that, that dancing around, trying to find that extra, sometimes it just doesn't work. It's better to go down. And by the way, did you know that Orion Neighborhood Television has its very own internet radio station? You can create your own podcast or radio show or sign up to become a DJ. For more information on the radio station, give ON TV a call at 248-393. 1060. Have you tried that at all? I was on Sammy Terramina's podcast. Uh, he does a great job with the OAA now. And yes, it's, it's uh, quite a boon to the community. So wholesale changes for the Dragons on defense. And a bad snap. And Fallen on by Bishop James. It'll be second down after a huge loss on first down. 13-yard loss. 12 yards, they're calling it. You're looking at doing some research, you know, on the on the game on these two teams. Lake Orion's um, seven and one against Oak Park all time. Um, but when you look at the enrollments of the schools, Lake Orion 23, just over 2,300 yeah. people. Oak Park just under 1,200. I mean, yeah. obviously, you, you look at both sides lines, you see the, the sheer numbers over here at Lake Orion. You look at the other sideline and see the, the numbers of Oak Park. And so, um, you know, it just, it's just, it's such a challenge in this whole OAA, whether you're red, white, or blue, yep. just the disparity sometimes between uh, enrollments and sizes and, and 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 talent levels and stuff. So right and right now you're seeing the the Dragons play better football. Yep. Um, that pass was complete to Tim Timothy Squire. Run out by. We're going through our roster now. Joey Hogan ran him out. Tried to get some of the changes in. Ben Shadle is in at one cornerback position. I think I saw Tyler Ratliff in there somewhere. Handoff. Number 32, Jordan Oliver. He gets one. Look, yeah. As soon as that play was over, I looked immediately to the Lake Orion side. And there's about 15 guys, uh, players and coaches, that are just jumping up and down, yelling and screaming, and cheering their teammates on. And that's that's exactly what you got to see from this from your side. Look at these guys down here. You They're got, jumping up and down. They're chanting. Yeah. They are so thrilled for their their, their guys out there. And that's where you, that's where you got to be. I mean. For all those twos that are, are, are don't get a lot of reps during the week, 
Now they're getting those reps now, and you yep. got the, 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 the starters getting out there and hooting and hollering for them. Great to see. Great the to see. starters are supporting them just as well as the two supported them. And this does so much, you know, they, they, there's always the talk about team chemistry. You know, if you're on defense and you're a one, if you're a two, you support the ones. And you know what? The ones are supporting the twos as they go out. It is fourth down and eight from the 26. Nate Ritz checks into the defensive backfield. Aiden May checks in at a linebacker spot. Troy Erickson in at a defensive line position. It's fourth and eight, and they're going to punt. Low snap. No rush by the Dragon. Takes a Lake Orion bounce and is downed at the 40 of Oak Park where the Dragons will take over first and 10. And that defense gets a lot of love coming off the field. And we have wholesale changes for the Dragons on offense. Jake Masella checks in at a wide receiver spot. Matt Costanzo split right. Austin, Con Austin Kahn is in a slot right. Connor McCartan is the quarterback. Motion, this side handoff up the middle goes nowhere. Taken by number 32, Congetti, Dom Congetti, for no gain. It'll be second down, and we're inside two minutes to go. A great showing by the Dragons tonight. Yeah, we. I mean... 7-7 seven, seven to start and yeah. you know, under three minutes to go. and Just just three minutes to go into the first quarter, the high scoring. And we thought, oh boy, it's going to be one of these games and, and uh, from both sides. And, and uh, Lake Orion found a way in that second quarter to, to take charge and, and uh, really turn it on offensively. And the defense, like I said, settled down a little bit. And um, we've seen the Dragons play well from that point on. Congetti on the run for no gain, maybe a half a yard loss. It'll be third down. Trey Pakmara going both ways is in a slot left. Comes in motion. Handoff up the middle. First down run by Kenjetti. He had a hole up the middle and made the most of it. Five fifteen to go. Dragons going to have a first and ten. I'll have to play. Call one more play, and that'll be it. Pretty much, yeah. And they go into a victory formation. Connor should just take a knee, which he does. The Lake Orion Dragons, even their record at one and one with a very convincing 45 to 15 victory over the Oak Park Knights. Chris, this was an entirely different team than what we saw last week. When you don't turn the ball over, more times than not, good things happen, and we saw that tonight with the with the Dragons. There, there was some consistency on offense. Uh, uh, that offensive line came off the ball and knocked people off off their spots, and, and uh, the school players made some plays. We saw a sophomore quarterback step up and do a heck of a job tonight. And this is also the 150th 
win at Lake Orion, and our congratulations go out to head coach Chris Bell on reaching that milestone. Again, our final score is the Lake Orion Dragons 45, the Oak Park Knights 15. We'll be right back. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Down on the field after a very convincing 45-15 victory by the Dragons over the Oak Park Knights. Chris, both sides of the ball. This was a different team than what we saw last night. We saw a quarterback grow up. We saw them run the ball. Maybe they didn't get big gains with every carry, but they moved the ball on the ground. They didn't have to throw the ball a lot. No, they didn't, and when they did throw the ball, they had success with it. You know, they had a big touchdown towards the end of the first half. Uh, from 31 yards out, uh, a, a, a pass that completed a first down later on the second half. But you're right, bottom line, offensively, they found a groove. They get, uh, Roberson, Payne, Jones, you name it. Uh, and then, oh, by the way, T.R. Hill running the ball well and managing the offense and, and not turning the ball over. Yeah. You didn't see one situation in that offensive backfield where the quarterback and the running back mesh uh, ended up bumping into each other. So that's a big part of the, the offensive uh, uh, efficiency tonight yeah. and uh, as a result you saw 45 15. coach congratulations on win 150. yes thank you oh. thank you a <laughs> long time coming it's yeah. been a few years well you took a few years, took a few years <laughs> so yeah right. no you know what just i'm very proud of the kids the way they responded because we really really we played two-thirds of football last week we played pretty good defensively we were really good on special teams and offensively we were a mess and to have the guys come back we made some changes, but we cleaned some things up, that, and we played clean football tonight. And not perfect, um, mm -hmm. but we played clean football, and I think that we made a team that's, that's really pretty good. Oak Park is going to be a good team. They've got some athletes and players. Mm -hmm. Greg's a great coach, but you know they, they weren't doing a lot to stop us, so I'm really proud of our kids, the way they played. It looked like, TR looked like an entirely different football player than what we saw last week. He matured tonight. He made a statement. Talk about your quarterback. You know, I got two good ones. And, uh, you know, as, as good as TR played, I'm proud of Connor, who was a great teammate and coaching him along the way. And it's hard. They both want to play. Um, TR just does, we made some adjustments to the offense, and it kind of fits TR a little bit better. Um, but, you know, we, we got to keep bringing both along because when you're running a quarterback, you know the, the quarterback takes a shot. we got to be the other guy ready to go. And Connor can run it too. Um, the hard part is this. I think what will help TR is starting the game, he was able to get in the flow. It's very, very hard sometimes to come off the bench cold, and starting the game helped him get in the flow, and that was the idea. We well, talk about the flow and you know, 383 yards from what we tallied up offensively to, to Oak Park's 130. Um, you know, you had Roberson, you had Jones, you had, I mean, TR ran the ball in him. And then, oh, by the way, you threw in a, a touchdown pass towards the end of the first half. So you, there was a, you got, you've got multiple weapons offensively that now a defense has got to focus on. They can't just focus on Roberson like 180 some odd yards last week. Talk That's about right. the, the skilled players you've got that are able to contribute to your offense. Absolutely. And I think we're still figuring that out, how to use those guys. But yeah, we've got a lot of talent all over the place. And if they're going to focus on something, taking something away, then we have to make the adjustments. And yeah, we can throw the ball. Um, we haven't been throwing it real well, so we kind of, you know, we wanted to be a little conservative tonight, but we're going to have to throw the ball in this league to beat people. Um, but re really, I'll be honest, you know, the other thing that, that was phenomenal is our front seven on defense. And our whole defense in general. We didn't give up any big, we gave a couple big plays, but we were able to tackle them and line up again. 
But our pass rush, that front four might be some of the best front four in, it, we've ever seen here in a long time. Those guys play. We were, and the linebackers with Patrick and Chris played well, and and uh, KD's playing awesome at star position. So those guys, when they're when they're playing like that, they help give they help call plays, make it a little bit easier. We made the mention today, Pat Rowland. He's like a field general out there. He's he's making sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. He has that whole he sees that whole defense. Yes, and he's playing so good. And you know, Patrick, you know, as the whole community knows, you know, lost his father, you know, three weeks ago and and the teams really rallied around him and and I know Patrick's dad is smiling down on him. And and, and there was nobody that, that's a football family. And Patrick is you know, I, he's just he's playing the way his dad would want him to play. And it just makes us so proud. On to Oxford next week. The war on, on M24 continues. What do you see so far? They're well coached. Zach Line does a great job. Um, it's never easy. You know, the emotion gets going both sides. It's going to be a it's going to be a great football game. It won't be easy. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be a great atmosphere. Coach, congratulations on the win. Thank you. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Welcome Thanks, back. Chris. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So that wraps it up from the field at 45 to 15. Win for the Dragons. Four. Our ONTV crew, Joey Tyson, doing everything down in the truck. Joe Johnson on the sideline. Our entire student crews working the cameras tonight. As always, my broadcast partner, Chris Bridging. I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.